consider, is this the right tool for the purpose we're using? There are some key differences. I kind of hint on it on them, but Joe Donnelly. So I keep talking about SCORM 1.2, but there are other versions of SCORM. And it's a weird moment where just because something's new doesn't necessarily mean it's best. A screwdriver, a socket, and a wrench all turn a threaded bolt on when I'm working on my car, but they are very different tools. One is able to fit the need better than another. And rather than grabbing the tool in your toolbox that's brand new, you want to grab the tool in the toolbox that just fits the purpose. So SCORM 1.0 exists, but no one uses it. SCORM 1.1, hey, there's some folks here at Rust to see that have old courses, but no one uses it. SCORM 1.2 really is the lion's share of what we see going on. And it does the basics really well. Beginning, middle, end, bookmarking, assessments, big four, it's fantastic. And if that's the only content you're building as an instructional designer, it's a great tool. It fits almost every situation but it's not everything. SCORM 2004 is very valuable. It comes in three different editions, second, third, and fourth, because nothing in my life is easy, but they all fundamentally don't get along with one another. It takes four different players within an LMS to support SCORM 1.2, SCORM 2004 second, SCORM 2004 third, and SCORM 2004 fourth. The right time to use SCORM 2004 is when you need the tool to do a little extra stuff. Interactions become more complicated in SCORM 2004, which helps with reporting. And SCORM 2004 can create a choose your own adventure. I'm a kid of the 80s. I used to read these paperback novels that were choosing your own adventure. And if the road looks safer, go to page 95. But hey, if you want to go into the cave, go to page 23. The creator of that experience had to write out the whole experience, but you give a moment for a learner to pick or you get a pretest and a post-test with dynamic content in the middle. If you're doing those type of fancy things, SCORM 2004, third and fourth editions are often the right tool in the toolbox. If you're just doing beginning, middle, end and assessment, SCORM 1.2 is probably quicker, easier, faster, and more universally accepted. Many LMSs support SCORM 2004 really well, but others like Moodle support SCORM 1.2 only right out of the box. So, just because it's new doesn't mean it's helpful. And often using SCORM 2004 fourth edition because it's the latest version of SCORM can add time, complexity, and cost to your project that SCORM 1.2 would have worked right out of the box. So consider, is this the right tool for the purpose we're using? There are some key differences. I kind of hint on it on them, but Joe Donnelly, who's the resident in-house Rust to see SCORM expert, would highlight that SCORM 2004 can have larger suspend data. What that means is there's a bucket that holds an essay question. And I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but SCORM 2004 is a much larger bucket. You can get a short answer with SCORM 1.2. If you need 40 pages of essay, hey, SCORM 2004 might actually be a better fit in that moment. We also see the sequencing and navigation. That's the technical term for choosing your own adventure. And it can do some complicated things more than my simple example. You could have a pretest that dynamically generates a learning journey and then a post test that remediates and does all types of things. Um, an LMS can often handle that behavior differently and sequence a bunch of SCORM 1.2 courses, but there are moments where instructional designers need to be in charge of these things and build a very large course that does all of this stuff. And SCORM 1 2004 is absolutely the right tool in the toolbox to assist with those type of advanced learning criteria. Um, and then there's the interactions. What was the question? What was the human readable version? What type of question was it? What was the weight? How did the learner answer? How should have the learner answered? All of those things are available in SCORM 2004, and they can help content teams do a lot of retrospective look. Oh, no one ever answered question three correctly. Are we not teaching that appropriately, or did we mark the wrong answer as correct? I feel pretty strongly that teams that study how learners are engaged in a piece of content can build better courses, and often SCORM 2004 can advance that pretty fast. SCORM 1.2 can still do some of these things. SCORM 2004 does them in a way more robust way.